Hello there everyone and welcome back to another project that I'm going to be building here. This is the Walther's N-Scale Double Track Truss Bridge Kit molded in dark gray plastic. And this box, when I pulled it out and surprised at how heavy this was for being just a bridge. So I'm going to find out here just how much stuff is actually inside of this box here. So get that top off there which is pretty pretty hefty box these guys use for this stuff and we've got a whole plethora of styrene in here this is a lot more than I was expecting a bridge kit to have but there we go this is uh could be probably kind of intimidating to some nevertheless we're going to get this sucker built get it painted and get it on the layout and here we got some various decals of warnings and whatnot that we can stick on the side of the bridge somewhere if we want to. So here's the instructions here. You can, of course, always pause and read these and take a look at that. See what you think of it. The instructions make this seem pretty simple, actually. It doesn't seem like there's as many parts on the instructions here as what's on the trees there, but yeah, we've got some stuff about decaling too and not touching things well until it all dries. One, two, three, four, five styrene trees here. Here's the bridge size. Now what's kind of interesting is it turns out there's actually two halves to these bridge the side supports here. You gotta glue those together. I don't know why they decided to do that that way instead of just molding it in one solid piece, but that's what they did. I'm just going to try cutting this stuff off here with this fancy uh, X-Acto knife I got at Hobby Lobby over the summer. It's on clearance. It's got this fancy LED light on it there, as you can see. And I'll switch to this, the uh, flush cutters later on because this was actually a little bit tougher to cut through than I was expecting it to be. Brand new blade here, but yeah, as you can see, the kit is uh, pretty well made. You don't really see, I, I didn't see any flashing at all on here or anything that, you know, other than the little bits of plastic that are left over when you take it off the parts trees. I didn't see anything on here that made it seem like it was a, an old uh, worn out mold. It was, there was no flashing to speak of on this kit and that's, that's nice to see. And eh, screw the knife, it was going to take too long so I just went back to my tried and true flush cutters. Okay, so I've got all the parts cut off of the trees here, thrown into the two box halves. And it took a little bit of time to cut all this stuff off, but got to get it done. So I've got all these sprues left over here, the parts trees, and I uh, may not want to throw these away because this would make good, uh, good piping detail for buildings. Everything laid out in the box here. This is the large pieces box pieces that'll be the easiest to assemble so assembling the bottom of the bridge here these steel beams here it's a little bit like assembling Legos actually these these pieces actually just slip into each other and they fit pretty snugly so you, know, you don't have to worry too much about uh, having to glue them right away just slip right in here like that and the joints just kind of lock together just put these in here one at a time and put the beams in there one at a time I'm not really sure which which way is the better way to go put the put all the beams through each one of these first or to put these little side braces through each beam for I don't know I don't know which this is the way I did it though so it ended up uh, kind of causing a problem later on though as so we'll see Things uh, seemed straight out of the box. I didn't check it though, but after I got these little cross braces on here, things kind of went a little bit uh, curly on me there. The whole thing just kind of went into a little bit of a potato chip there. I'm not exactly sure why that was, but uh, we had to fix it nonetheless. It a a uh, warped, sagging bridge in the middle is not a good thing for track. 
straightness and trains going over it and not derailing or causing it just wouldn't look right. So here it is all assembled. You can see how much of a how much of a curve that suddenly has here. And this is not glued at this stage. So the way I fixed it there was to put a substantial amount of weight on it. And I took the hot the um, I was gonna say hot air gun would be the blow dryer and just kind of heated that styrene up there until it flattened out. And this worked pretty well for the most part. I had to go back and do this a couple, couple, three or four times as I was assembling it, but it did all work out in the end, thankfully, for the most part. You can see how much weight I'm having to put on this thing to keep it held down. So I got it uh, heated up here and flattened out. So I'm gonna go start gluing these things into position. Now I'm using just straight MEK as it dries quicker than uh, modeling glue does. Traditional hobby modeling glue that you would use for this. So I found it was kind of sticking to my mat here, so I stuck it up on these blocks here like this. This actually worked pretty well to, uh, to keep it straightened out as well. These, these blocks, they come in handy for so many wonderful little things like this. I've had to use a similar technique to straighten out model car frames too. Put some weight on it, flatten it out, and then heat it up so it uh, stays in that position. So I'm going to start assembling the side truss things here. And these are two halves that we have to assemble, so I'm just going through here and gluing these together. I don't know why Walther's did that. You can also see there's some little injection mold things there. Uh, I did there was a little tiny bit of flash that was hanging off of those I just cut those down a little bit it wasn't too big of a deal but if you don't cut those off flatten them out obviously the two halves won't go together very well um, I had no problems with this part of the assembly they went together just fine and because of there's there's a little trim piece you put around there later on you don't see that gap at all really so I'm using more of my favorite weights here to keep that sucker. It's just to keep the halves uh, pressed up against each other while the glue does its work of melting the plastic and then drying. So we're going to start assembling the frame here. And it's straightened up for the most part. It uh, definitely would not have been able to assemble it to the the side there had I left it as a springy potato chip like it was before <laughs> shape. So you can see these beams here, they've got these little tabs that fit right into here, right into the side. There's little, there's little uh, notches down in here for that too. So you can fit those down in there. You see this has really nice uh, rivet detail all over it. I got a nice close shot of that there. I'm going to fit that those beams, the base of it there, those beams, we're going to fit those right down into those notches there, those little holes. And this did take a little bit of finagling until I ended up here just flush cutting some of these off to make it easier. Because not all of them were lining up quite exactly the way they needed to be. This actually worked out pretty good, actually. Just to, I just got a few of them here and there. Not all of them. I, I still wanted some to hold it into place. And I did that on both sides as well here. And now we're gluing everything in and because there was just a little bit of a tweak still to that frame I had to use some weight to keep it in place. And then once the glue dried it wasn't a big deal. It, uh, it stayed relatively straight. I guess it seemed straight to me when I got done with it. It was an interesting balancing act <laughs> to keep these weights on the side here without the whole thing going tippy-toppy over on itself, but uh, it, it, it uh, did end up working, so. And now it's time to tackle the other half here. And I'm gonna end up doing the exact same thing. As you can see, it, it, uh, it straightened out here. I mean, it's, it's, it's holding its shape, so. 
that MEK does a really good job at melting and melting this this plastic and and uh, and drying quick and and you know being pretty strong, making a pretty strong joint there. And we're doing the same thing again here. Like I said, the other hat, other side here, the balancing act with the weights, keep everything in place while the glue dries. So here's a nice close-up shot of the rivet detail of this kit. You can see it's really well defined and very clean. So when you put paint to this, it'll stand out very, really nicely. So we've got these little trusses here. Got to put across the top here, and uh, the instructions actually. I think the instructions said to put these on before you put the two halves on. So when you got the one half on, then you start putting them on, and then you put the other half on top of it. I didn't do that. I decided that I wanted to have the. There's a little bit of pressure between the two halves that would hold those into place, at least some of them. I still got to clean that off. I did clean that off up there, by the way, that little top there, a little nub sticking out there. But you can see that there's a little bit of a flexibility to the whole thing. And it just, the pressure just kind of keeps it together there. So I just put those into place as I went along, hit them with some glue and uh, called it good. And here's the first one glued into place. I did have to put a little bit of weight on, on these as I got more of them in there because the thing stayed apart far enough to where those things would actually fall through. So I had to use a little bit of weight when the last couple ones that I put in there, but it wasn't a big deal. So the bottom of this thing has these cross braces down here and they don't exactly fit 100%, so I, I just kind of made them work. I glued them into place, and then there's a couple that I, I, I there's two of them that were, that had little, the, the ends were a little bit fatter than the rest of them, and I did notice that when I was gluing them. I thought they were all the same. In fact, you can see the one, the one white, end, the one with the white pad there sitting on the desk. And I didn't realize when I was putting this together that there were different pad widths. I thought they were all the same, but I think because there's two of them, those were meant to go on the ends. I ended up just trimming that pad off when I got to the end. And again, we're using our lovely one, two, three blocks here. And this time I'm actually uh, doing a little bit of blow dryer here because uh, I want this stuff to set up fast because I just want to get it done at this point, you know? <laughs> It's like, okay, this is taking a while. I, I, I wanna get the glue set up here and get it melted and then it dried right away here. That's why I'm doing it. It sets up pretty quick as it is, but a little heat never hurts anything unless you put too much heat to it. And we got these little trim pieces right here. And these fit in here without any kind of issue whatsoever. Just Smear some glue across there. It's actually like a little, those two halves form a, a channel down the middle and then there's a little, a little tab, I want to say tab, but it goes the whole length of the thing there anyway. It, it just fits down in there so it's centered, it centers it there. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to get it centered here over the, the beams that I put in there, at least somewhat reasonably centered. Uh, it, it goes down uh, nice and easily and flat and works really well. You got these little, I'm going to call them beauty trim trim pieces here. These little beauty trim things. They, they have the rivet detail on here. I got to put those end ones on here. They just, like I said, they just fit into that channel that those two halves created there. Works pretty good. They, now I didn't have to cut those or trim them or file them or anything to make them fit. They just went in there, went in there uh, without without any kind of complaining. And you know, the whole time I'm building this thing, I, I, I took a look at photos of various bridges, and I know a lot of these are silver, and I just wanted to see if 
what how common these bridges were silver and I so I'm kind of thinking at this point you know what, what color do I want to paint this bridge I might want to paint it like a red or blue or something other than silver but uh, I ended up going with silver in the end and kind of weathered it up a little bit as we'll see a little bit later on in the video but yeah. so we got the bridge in the uh, new paint booth here and this is going to be it's the paint booth's maiden voyage first use here and the first thing I'm doing with the uh, the first coat of paint that I'm doing on the bridge here is just some cheap uh, $1 Walmart flat black here which I think sprays really nicely. I, I wish Walmart still sold all the other colors they used to sell for a buck, but they only sell black and white nowadays. This stuff sprays really fine. So this is the first coat. We'll consider this kind of like a primer coat, but, um, and then we'll put our uh, silver over this. Okay, so we're hitting the uh, bridge now with some Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 aluminum. And I'm just kind of misting it on here. Not going terribly crazy. I don't want to flood it. I don't want to lose all of that black shading here. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I noticed a lot of these bridges that were silver there were areas where they where the silver had worn off and it was black underneath. So that's what I'm trying to. That's why I've got the black under underlayment here, so that when I start doing some sanding in certain areas, the black is going to show through. Not to mention it gives us a nice shadowing effect. And because I'm misting it on, there's going to be a little bit of black, you know, patches here and there that show up a little more than others. And we don't need a lot of a lot of uh, silver paint here, and this stuff dries pretty quick here. You can see I'm already uh, I'm already grabbing it here, and uh, we're able to just flip it over and uh, continue on our merry way here. I wasn't really sure if I was going to paint the underside or not, but I figured, well, I've got <laughs> I don't know, I'm not going to see it anyway, but I just obviously went ahead and did it so. Now at this stage in the game, if you like clean models, and if you want a, a nice shiny new paint, freshly painted bridge, and you could just leave it like this at this stage and, and throw it on the layout and you can see I don't got any paint on my hands here and you see how fast that stuff dries. It's really nice. But yeah, I mean, if you wanted to just uh, leave it that, it that way, throw it on the layout now and call it good. But I'm not going to do that. So now that I've got the uh, aluminum paint on here, I'm going to hit it with this clear. And just misting it on here just to give it the, the aluminum paint some protection here. So when I start doing the, the uh, weathering to this thing, we still have the, the base protected. And hey, you know, if you... Uh, Ever want to go back, you don't like what you did on the weathering, hey, just repaint it. Pretty easy. These Tamiya swivel things are really nice for painting. Or Tamiya, however you want to pronounce it. Give the freshly painted bridge a spin around the merry-go-round there. So the first thing I'm going to use to weather this bridge up is just some good old fashioned rust. This tester's enamel pen here. These are railroad colors. So I'm just penciling this on here or markering it on, whatever you want to call it there. And uh, then I'll go back and 
you know, my finger there, I'm dabbing it on there, kind of spreading it out a little bit. I'm trying to keep my hand from in front of the camera, but it's kind of hard sometimes. I'm just kind of dabbing it on here. I'm not trying to do anything. I want randomness, you know. It's a little bit here, a little bit there. You know. And just smear it around with my fingers there. No need for a Q-tip, no need for a rag, no need for a brush, just good old fashioned finger. I should have, I forgot to clean one of those little nubs off, didn't I? Hmm. I may have to go back and fix that. So I'm just smearing this all across here like so, and you can see it gives it a kind of a nice, it, it dulls. One of the things that I, reason I did the clear coat was because it also dulled that shiny aluminum down. Because these bridges, when they're painted silver outside for 30 or 40 years or longer, they almost fade to a gray. They lose a lot of that silver sheen, so that's why I put the the um, clear coat, the matte finish clear coat over it, was to dull that. And then the weathering that I'm putting on here now, between the rust colors that I'm going to use here, and the black and the sanding, and it dulls the whole thing down pretty well. So I'm going over the top of this because I figure that. This is probably an area where the bridge is going to get the most rain on it. Rain, hail, bird poop, whatever. And this is going to be, I don't want the bridge to be rusted out. I just want it to be like, well, it was painted maybe 15, 20 years ago and there's some surface rust that's starting to kind of show through, bleed through the paint, show through, bleed through the paint. So that's kind of what the idea here is. I'm going over the top of the bridge most mostly for that reason to give it uh, the the not necessarily the well probably the most rusted area actually of this bridge because I'm not going terribly crazy with this I could go crazy with it I thought about doing doing some bird poop on it which I may still do white splatters along the side there and you know that's that's prototypical and pigeons they like to lay big old dumplings on everything. Now, unfortunately, the part that I recorded of this, where I was putting a little bit of, using a little bit of black pen, acrylic black pen on this, as well as a little bit of the Anita's burnt sienna in certain places, I that clip um, uh, I don't have. So this is as much of the actual weathering that I got recorded. But you get the idea. This is various different colors. And this is, but this is just a general technique that I use throughout the entire process of weathering. So, yeah, you, you get the idea either way. So here it is on the layout. I'm just kind of test fitting it here, mainly for the video. You can see the, the way that rust turned out the bottom there. That's I kind of focused my attention on that, those bottoms there where those beams come together and all those rivets and stuff like that. Tried to uh, get it the rust showing where the water would collect, at least where I would think the water would mostly collect. And you can see how that silver got dulled down quite a bit there. It only looks more gray than anything, but that's the way they are in real life. You can still see that there's, the black is still showing through the silver there in a lot of places, and that's the way they really are. And along the top right there, I did use a little piece of sandpaper where that's blackened right in there. Um, I used a piece of sandpaper and just kind of sanded that down to the uh, to the black primer that I used before. And I and I used a little bit. You can see the black, the bottom there above the rivets there. That's where I'd use some. I was smearing some black along there, the acrylic black with a black pen there, just to kind of dull it down a little bit and to make it look like the silver had come off in those spots there. It hadn't rusted yet, but the silver was coming off in those spots. And You know, I, I think overall, despite this kit not may, maybe being uh, a beginner's level kit, um, it's, it turned out really nice. 
I probably should have mounted those beam, those those cross trusses right there. I probably should have mounted those up a little bit higher because there's pro I think they're supposed to be actually touching those little pads sticking out there, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, if so, I think that's it for this uh, particular build, the Walther's double track end scale bridge here turned out pretty decent. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again for another build.